So let's uh, put our hands together and we're going to welcome our next uh, Mastermind 34 top performer. But we're going online. We're going to share someone online. So we're going to put them on the screen. And this is someone who is based in Dubai. So who's been investing here in the UK as part of our Mastermind program. So let's put our hands together for Hannah Hankel. <laughs> Hello everybody, good morning. Can you see and hear me? I'm, I'm hoping yes. Yes, so we can. Look, thank so, you. Thank you, Andy. Such a privilege and an honor to, um, to be presenting and sharing with you all a bit about my mastermind journey. Um, and just want to take a moment, Derek, to say, wow, what an incredible journey you've had. Um, loved your presentation and, and it's been such an honor seeing your growth over the last year. So my name is Hannah, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about my background to start with. I'm a business psychologist by background. I've been working in the corporate world for the last 20 plus years, and um, I started my career in the UK. Sorry, I'm just trying to go back. Started my career in the UK, and I've now been based living and working in Dubai for the last 10 years. My property journey began in 2008 uh, in a place called Harpenden in Hertfordshire, where I got my first residential property. And then, of course, when I moved to Dubai, I became an accidental landlord when I rented that out. I then didn't think much more about property after that um, until the year 2022, when I was then pregnant with our first son, Samuel. Um, and what me and my husband reflected on is that over a decade in Dubai, where we don't have pension plans, we really wanted to accelerate building a future and a nest egg for our family. So I set about learning everything I could about property, all of the different strategies. I was self-taught off YouTube, thought I knew everything. Um, and after six months of searching across the country in a very scattered approach, I was feeling really exhausted. My due date was draw drawing closer. Um, and so I just wanted to put our savings somewhere and feel that our money was working for us. So I decided to go north because... I know that in the north you can get better yields uh, and cash flow. So I went to Newcastle where I was born and I jumped on a couple of single let um, turnkey properties. The first one actually completed on the day that our son was born, which took us all by surprise because he came two months early. Um, and really after that, I was heading into my maternity leave more motivated than ever to really continue to educate myself. But this time I got some proper education, so I decided to do the Mastermind Accelerator at the end of 2022. I then signed up for the, the full Mastermind program, and that wasn't due to start until October 2023, uh, but it did mean that I got access to a coach from the beginning of the year. And that's really what changed the game for me, because with my coach and experienced property investor, um, I was able to get a lot of clarity on what I wanted to achieve and how I was going to do it. So we identified that really for me in my first phase, um, going for a high cash flowing strategy like houses of multiple occupancy was ideal. And I was focusing on the greater Manchester area. We also identified that me being thousands of miles away uh, meant that I was going to have to build a really strong team on the ground and start leveraging other people's time and expertise. So that's what I did, and I, I built a fantastic team, um, and sure enough, on my son's first birthday in July 2023, the hammer came down on our first HMO development project. I am going to talk more about this on the following slides, but this will be a 12-bed, all on suite HMO. And, and not long after, so earlier this year, I also secured our second HMO development project, which is a three-bed house, which will be converted into a five-bed HMO. So two ends of the scale, one quite quite large, a big conversion, the other one um, a little bit smaller, but it was really great for me to have got that, that broad spectrum of experience. And when I look back and reflected on some of the numbers, and, and I will share the, the property mastermind numbers with you later on, but this is just for me looking back over the last couple of years of where I was and where I've got to, my GDV, my cash flow, my ROI have all grown exponentially. And by the time I exit from these two HMOs, which are under development at the moment, so in the next sort of six months, um, this is what I will have achieved. And that's 14x in terms of my cash flow. Simon actually sent us all a book at the beginning of the course, which is called 10x is easier than 2x. So I was absolutely delighted to see that I'd 14x cash flow in, in, in that couple of years. Why do I do what I do? Um, it's all about my family. So you can see this picture here. It was actually taken a few days ago. So we have a, a new addition to the family. Gabriel was born three weeks ago. 
um, and he is a huge part of my reason why, along with his brother and my husband. And it's really about, as I said, securing that future for our family and giving us the freedom and the flexibility to choose where and how we spend our time. So when things get tough, and there have been a lot of challenges over the past year, um, this is this is what anchors me. This is what I stay connected to, to keep pushing through those challenges and to keep moving forwards. So I'll take you through a couple of case studies. The first one is the, the larger of the two. It's the 12 bed. It's actually going to be two HMOs, a seven bed all en suite on the ground floor and a five bed on the first floor. It's, uh, it's, it's formerly a mixed use um, commercial and residential property. It was a gym. It was then a pharmacy. Um, commercial viability wasn't really working in this location. It's based in Radcliffe in Greater, Greater Manchester. It had failed twice at auction. I did try to purchase this outside of auction, but my offer was rejected. Um, so I was really happy actually when I managed to purchase it for about that price when the auction went ahead. Interestingly, the seller then tried to pull out, so had to navigate that and, and get the, the deal back on track. It also had an overage, which made it unmortgageable. Um, so the solicitors had to work on, on arranging and agreeing a price for, for the removal of that. Um, full planning was required for the ground floor. There's a single story extension there and a change of use from, from commercial to, um, to HMO sui generis. And, and that was not an easy process. So we started the planning in October. We then found out that they wanted to do a BAT survey and that the BAT survey then threw up some issues that they wanted us to then wait until the BAT roosting season in May the following year. Um, bats are a protected species and that would have made the deal untenable really. However, with an amazing planning consultant and a great team on the ground, big shout out to Tim and Phil if you're online, um, we were able to really look into uh, the bat survey and understand that they'd actually looked at the whole ground floor area and not just the area where it was being demolished. So that, that request was removed. However, we also had 17 objections from neighbours in the area. I had requested a door knock, so we'd done a door knock in the neighbouring streets. And that actually went in our favour because we didn't have any complaints from the, the closest neighbours. So by the time we got to committee in February, um, the other objections, we managed to address each of the points and they, they didn't carry much weight. Construction finally started in June. You'll notice the time lag between getting the planning approved in February and getting on site in June. This was my first development finance with a commercial lender, so there were a lot of hoops to jump through. It was a massive, steep learning curve for me, um, but it did it did extend the, the timeline a little bit longer than we had hoped. And now it's well underway. Refinance and tenancy is expected by January 2025. So let's take a look at the numbers. Um, purchase price is 145. I did purchase in cash because I knew that there was going to be some risk with the planning. I had some support from an investor to, to support with some of the costs. Um, the refurb and PM costs, total costs come to just over um, half a million. The NGDV will be 743 based on a commercial vow. You've got the gross monthly income, the monthly costs, the monthly cash flow is netting just over 2,000, annual cash flow just over 25,000. And cash left in is also just over 25,000. So that gives a, an incredible 100% ROI, so money back out within a year. Here's some pictures of the property. On the top left, you can see it was actually a former pub before it came a mixed use property. That picture was taken in 1975. And here it is again in 2005. And the, the top right picture actually makes me feel quite sad because after I had purchased it at auction and while we were going through the purchase process, it was vandalized twice. Um, so we had to quickly secure and tank the building. Uh, I never recouped the money on the insurance from the sellers. Um, it was quite a lengthy and, and convoluted process. So I decided my time was better spent on other things. Um, that was also a lesson, lesson learned. And you can see some of the pictures of it in progress and some of the plans that we have. Second, second project, I will move through this quite quickly. Um, this is a, a fairly standard three, three bed terrace property that is going to be a five bed HMO. This is in Greater Manchester as well, in Little Halton. Um, I purchased this one on a bridge and this is going to be actually finished before the first project. So we're expecting to refinance by the end of October. Purchase price of 152, cost just under 20,000. Total cost just under 300K. NGDV is 338 and then the monthly cash flow will be 901 
annual cash flow of just over 10K cash left in and an ROI of 38%. Now, in terms of future deals, um, this is not really my, my investment area. This is where I live. Um, and we currently live in a two bed apartment, which we're outgrowing now with our expanding family. Um, so we are keen to move and upgrade to a larger apartment. Um, but what that means is that our property will no longer be a liability and we can turn this into an asset. So what I'm really looking to do with this property is make it an SA because I think given the location it will do fantastically. But this offer on our new property was only accepted a few days ago. So what I've done is I've put the numbers based on our current property, um, which was purchased back in 2018 for just over half a million. Um, there were some costs, we did a refurbishment. Um, the, comp the, the market has actually gone up considerably in Dubai. It is a volatile market. It is a little bit risky, um, but the NGDV is actually now almost doubled um, in less than seven years. So um, what this means is that we'll be able to take a lot of cash out to put towards our new purchase. And then any money that we get on the, the rent, whether it's SA, this is based on a single let, will be put towards um, the new property and, and kind of offsetting that mortgage. So it's an infinite return on this one. Here's some pictures. I was really proud of this because I did do the design and project managed the refurb, but then I also said that I would never want to go through that again. Um, and little did I know that on my single lets, I would be project managing refurbs not long after. This was done in 2021. Here's some numbers on uh, specifically on the deals that I've done over the mastermind period. So I've talked you through the two HMOs. Uh, and as Simon just said, he does have a kind of promise or a target for students, which is the 1 million GDV and the 50K net profit per year. Um, on those two HMOs, you can see that I've exceeded the 1 million, haven't quite met the net monthly cash flow. But what I also wanted to include here is, is there was a lot of work that I've been doing on my single lets over the last year. Um, with the learning that I had for Mastermind, I recognized immediately that my Harpenden property was very tired and needed a, a refurbishment. So I refinanced and I invested 30,000 in a refurb, bringing it up to spec. That actually allowed me to raise the rents by 550. I was also significantly under renting it. Um, so that was an incredible win on repurposing my existing property. Sadly, within a year, I had lots of structural issues with the pipes underground, so I had to spend another 7,000 unexpectedly on redecorating again and laying new floors throughout. Um, so based on that, I've got an 18% ROI and an uplift of 550 a month. I also had one of my single lets in Newcastle where I had tenants who were not paying. They defaulted on their rent. I had to go to court. I had to get them evicted and get possession back of the property. I think the voids have been up to about eight or nine months by now. I did get possession back of the property, but again, I realized that I needed to invest to bring it back up to standard. So I invested 15,000. Both of these refurbs were well, the 7,000 and the 15,000. I managed to get investor funding. I had a couple of people who were interested in dipping their toe in. So they had gone in with small amounts of money and I'm hoping to convert them on future deals to, to larger sums. So you can see the numbers here. If I include all of that, I have exceeded the target uh, and I'm really pleased with what I've managed to achieve in this time. In terms of what's next, um, the fit out fun is coming up. So this is really where you see that vision come to life. And I'm sure where all of the challenges will fade into a distant memory. This is the bit that I'm really looking forward to on the, on the two HMOs. I'll refinance and I'll go again. In terms of what I'm going to do next, um, development and investment wise, I am quite passionate about continuing to explore the commercial conversions route. I think there's huge opportunity here. I will be going down the permitted development route though and not uh, the planning route. I'm also very passionate about exploring supported living as an exit and also repurposing some of my existing properties, um, especially the single lets here. If anybody was at Property Magic Live last weekend, you will have heard Simon talking about this. It's an incredibly complex area. Um, it's not something that I'm, I'm knowledgeable about. There is a, a link to what I do in my day job, but I haven't done this in property. So I've joined the Supported Living Property Network, and I'm really excited to be expanding my knowledge and my network in this area and to see where that will take me. Continue to build my network and build my investor pool. I will continue to have some sleepless nights, both from a uh, young baby and the, the property projects for sure. Um, I will continue my education. It's really important to me that I invest with knowledge and with skill. And last but not least, I wanted to share a, a sneak peek. I'm very excited that I'm about to launch a property business um, called Sabe Living. 
So really excited to introduce this to everybody. Um, the website will be launching in a couple of weeks. This is a property investment and development company that will be dedicated to transforming commercial and residential spaces into homes that inspire and uplift. And through that thoughtful design and inclusive design, we're also looking to cater to diverse tenant types in the in the projects that we do and sellers and tenants. Tips and lessons learned. Um, again, like Derek said, I think everything that I'm going to share with you on this slide ladders up to one thing, and that's about trusting the process. Um, so I will maybe just call out a couple of these, um, but these would be my key takeaways and, and advice that I would give anybody who's thinking of starting out. You've heard people saying it already. I will say it again. Mindset is 80% of your success, and it's really first and foremost. And despite being a psychologist, this was actually something that I really struggled with at the start. I didn't believe I had the ability, the time, the headspace. How could I do it from thousands of miles away? Um, but really with the right community, with the right education, and with a big enough reason why, you can absolutely do it. The other one that I'll point out on here is the importance of the stretch, so being comfortable with discomfort because property will give you a lot of discomfort. There are some ups and downs and you really do miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So this stretch is all about really putting yourself out there and taking massive action. Last but not least on this slide, it's all about community. So another mantra that we have in Mastermind is that your network is your net worth. And this couldn't be more true than the group that we have in Mastermind 34. We're spread all over the world from Brazil to Amsterdam to Dubai and of course in the UK. Um, and despite the distance, it really does feel like a family and we often call it the mastermind family. Um, and really this group has been through ups and downs. We've just had a session this morning. It was incredibly moving. The raw vulnerability of the group and sharing that what was a, a group of strangers just a year ago is just mind blowing. So thank you everybody for your vulnerability, for your banter, for your advice, your support and your inspiration. Um, and this last one is, is for all of us. If we want to go fast, we go alone. But if we want to go far, we go together. So here's going further for the next months and years as we stay connected. I did also want to say... Um, Wonderful. And let's hear for Hannah. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing, Hannah.